Good morning. Today we're going to look at uh, 2 Kings chapters 7 through 9. Uh, but first, I guess, I'll just let, yesterday we went to Bismarck. I had a checkup on my shoulder and I have good movement in my shoulder. Uh, I was really hoping that I maybe would be lucky enough and not have to wear this immobilizer quite so much, or maybe not at all. But uh, she said that since I had, it was a major tear that I needed to wear my immobilizer some more, especially when I'm out and about and and just to take continue to take care. But it's it's healing and it's it's doing okay. Um, as we look at these chapters today, uh, at the end of chapter six, um, there was a Samaria was under siege and had been for quite some time and the food was running real low. I mean, they were, you know, a lot of them starting to starve and, and food was just horrendously priced. And, and, uh, and it, it came that, you know, uh, the king came to Elisha and said, this trouble is from the Lord. Why should we do it? Why should I hope and trust in him anymore? And, and Elisha says, as chapter seven begins, hear the word of the Lord tomorrow at this time. A uh, choice of me, uh, a measure of choice meal will sell for a shekel, and two measures of barley for a shekel, which would be very, you know, normal prices, or maybe even less than normal prices. And you know, in this time of famine, with, I mean, it would be like saying that you know tomorrow gasoline is going to sell for twenty cents a gallon. You know, <laughs> we, you know, that's just, you know, this was kind of the extreme that the Elisha said, and of course the king didn't believe it and there was a captain of the guard was standing there and and he said even if the lord was to make windows in the sky how could such a thing happen and elisha responds with you will see this with your own eyes but you will not eat from it and during during the course of the night there's you know the story goes on there were four leprous men that decided to you know go out to this enemies and, and see if they could get some food from the enemy and they go and they find the camp deserted uh, god had sent the, the sound of many chariots and, and you know just they were frightened and they ran they left their tents they left their horses and they just ran and there was stuff scattered along the road as <coughs> as later that you know the the people went looking for this, but, you know, and these four lepers first started, you know, in the first tent they were in, they, they took all the valuables, went and buried it, the second tent as well, and then they thought, we need to go back and tell. So they did, and of course it wasn't, you know, they didn't believe it at first, but they found it to be true, and with all of the provisions that were in this camp of the, of the army that had been sieging them, and, you know, and, and well, then there was plenty of, of meal, plenty of barley and everything, and, and it did sell for the price that Elisha had said the day before. And there was such a stampede of people that this captain of the guard who was now standing at the gate saw this happen, but was trampled to death, so he did not eat of it. And, and it's just, I mean, strange things that just come about so often that way. Um, but... Uh, chapter 8, then we kind of get a little bit of a flashback. You know, Elijah had said to the woman whose son he had restored to life, you know, she, he had told her that there was going to be this famine uh, because of this siege and, you know, go live somewhere else for this time and then come back. And and when, the you know, the, the famine was over, uh, this woman came back and asked for her land and her properties and everything back again. And... Um, so, uh, she did, she got her land back and, and all of the, the proceeds, the income that would have been from her land in that whole time. Um, Elijah then in verse seven goes to Damascus and, you know, then the king of Aram, you know, says, you know, take a present and go meet him. And because he's, this king is sick. And ask, ask of him, will I recover from my illness? And, you know, they come with it. I mean, this offering is tremendous, you know, tremendous amount of um, booty that they bring, you know, bounty, whatever you want to call it. Uh, uh, but 
the, the word of the, the, the prophet Elisha is, yes, you will recover. However, you know, you're going to, you know, and you're going to die. And I mean, he tells this to the, to this person that, that comes, uh, that Hazael is his name. Um, you know, he says, and you're going to be king, you know, in place, you know, and so he goes, Hazael goes back and he tells, yes, you will recover. And then the next day he, he smothers him, he kills him and he anoints himself king. And, um, but yet, you know, and, and he was, it says he was 32 and he reigned, reigned for eight years and he walked in the way of the kings of Israel, the way of Ahab and did what was evil in the sight of the Lord. But yet the Lord did not destroy Judah for the sake of David. And he was just continue. I mean, how could, I mean, why would he continue to raise up these leaders or, you know, let them be raised up and, uh, that don't follow him. But, <clears throat> Uh, there's another revolt, you know, in, in the days of Edom, or Edom revolted against Judah and set up a kingdom of their own. And, and they've been, you know, they've been fighting and it's everything ever since. And then verse 25 of chapter 8 says that in the 12th year of King Jor Joram, Ahaziah began to reign. Well, we have a discrepancy with that over in, um, chapter 9 because over chapter 9 it says in the 11th year so there's i mean there's maybe it was a correction maybe who knows maybe it was a t somebody copied it wrong but if you're really reading it closely and really studying it uh, there is that discrepancy which uh, really doesn't matter a whole lot in in everything that way but there continues to be battles in chapter 9 there uh, again, more more rulers, more kings, more more wars. But one thing that happens is Jezebel uh, uh, dies in chapter nine, and uh, is that in chapter eight? I gotta no, in chapter nine. But Elijah had. You know, this is, I mean, we're talking Elisha now, but Elijah had, um, the prophet had said about Jezebel that, you know, that she would die and that the dogs would eat her, eat her flesh and everything. And so as, as Yehu comes into the gate and, and is there in the palace, Jezebel has, has fixed herself up as to say, you know, it says that Jezebel painted her eyes and adorned her head and looked out of the gate to the window. But when, when uh, Jehu came in, you know, and uh, you know, it's you know, they, they looked to the window, and, and and you know, here's here she is standing up there, and and he asks, you know, who is who is on my side? And it says three eunuchs look out, and he says, that throw her out the window, and and they do, and she dies as, as she falls on the ground, and and then he <clears throat> after he. As a meal, he sends them out to, you know, to properly bury her and find, you know, that the dogs have done as the prophet Elijah had said. And, you know, it's just gruesome, you know, in so many ways, but, but yet it's, it, it's just reminding us that, that, you know, that God sees who we are and God knows who we are. And, 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 and uh, I don't look at the punishments from God. I don't look at, at God as being the one who doles out these punishments and bad luck to people that way. But, but, but yet God knows what's in our hearts. He, he knows who we are. And, and, and I, I always remind myself too that, you know, even though these Israelites have been freed from captivity for many years, they just, they, they don't have leaders that are, that are faithful and just and true to God, and 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 they need somebody like that. They need these prophets, Elijah, Elisha. They need the other prophets that that call them back. But yet, you know, the, the people's hearts seem to be hardened against God, and there's just and sin is prevalent, and and it's the same way today. I mean, sin is so prevalent in the world, and we look at. I mean, the leaders of the world, rather than working together for peace and for goodwill for others, you know, we have, 
We have continued war in Israel. We have continued conflicts, although we don't hear so much about it anymore in Ukraine and, and so many places in the world. And it's because of the evil in people's hearts. And, and it's, you know, it's, it's the evil has been present in the world since the, the time of Satan, the, the serpent tempting Eve and Adam in the garden. And, um, and God continues to work against evil through, in, as we've been reading his prophets, but he works against evil today in and through you and me, you know, people that are, that hear God's word and people that want to help others and, and people that, you know, that reach out and, and, and we may say, what can we do? Well, the best thing we can do uh, is, to, is to pray, to pray for our safety, to pray for our government, to pray for our leaders, to pray for the world. And, and you know, sometimes, we, sometimes people discount prayer, but it's a powerful tool that we have to speak to God and, and to know and to trust that, you know, God still hasn't given up on humanity. He never gave up on Israel. I mean, Israel, the kings and the people continued to sin and, and do so much wrong, yet God has never given up on humanity.